stop fooling around and tell you a few funny stories. I noticed too, though, a lot of folks here wearing glasses. Did you ever take time out to think how far ahead nature was planning us to put ears in the right place in case you had to wear glasses? Our ears could have been somewhere else. But if this meat wasn't here, my glasses would be on the floor. Either that or I'd be wearing goggles. See, you can cut this meat off completely and still hear because the hole is more important than the meat. You, you, you believe that, don't you, sir? You don't believe that? Put your money back in your pocket. See, what if our ears had been back here? Wouldn't that be something? You'd have to pull your pants down to hear what I'm singing. Can you imagine what the entertainer had to look at in case the crowd was really listening? <laughs> imagine that. Jesus. <clears throat> One thing, though, if the ears were back here, wouldn't be too much whispering going on. I know I wouldn't have nothing to say to no fellas. I might whisper to a chick. You got a big ear. <laughs> Here's the trick. No, dear, sit down. I mean this kind. Here's the trick. No, dear, I sit down. I missed it on purpose. My wife's idea. I have a new wife. And she, she said, Mrs. Fox, try to make it look hard. So I've been trying to make it look hard for the wife. <laughs> Have you ever tried that, fellas? <laughs> no, please. Please, I don't need that. I had that in the Marine Corps. <laughs> That's right. Clap. <laughs> hey, all these stories I'm going to tell you about. Hey, I'll tell you what your reaction will be to my next story. See, when I get to the punchline, there'll be silence, giggles, and snickers, then laughs. Watch. Uh, these two girls were walking down the street, and one girl hunched the other. She said, hey, girl, look across the street. Isn't that your husband coming out of the forest? She said, yes, damn it, he's got two dozen roses. She said, I'm going to have to keep my legs up in the air three days. Her girlfriend looked at her and said, well, why don't you get a vase? <laughs> That's the way to laugh, honey. That's the way. Throw your neck back and enjoy yourself. He's pretty. Wish I like white women. I mean, personally, I don't want no white woman. You see me with a white woman, I'm holding her for the police. Because I'm no fool, I prefer Ann Margaret over Shirley Chisholm. I prefer Dick Butkus, Dick Butkus over Shirley Chisholm. Boy, you got some ugly women in the world, ain't it? I love them. See, I love ugly women because they don't ask for too much. Because they know they ain't going nowhere. <laughs> well, really now, it takes some of the great ugly women of the world. I mentioned a few left Esther out because she stands alone. Right, Dan has an ugly black woman, too. But she'll never be ugly as Miss Roosevelt. That's your boss, ugly woman, ever been here. <laughs> I saw Miss Roosevelt's picture in Jet Magazine and got a soft on. <laughs> See, I talk about niggas, you know what I mean? Because niggas are holding black people back. I know that's confusing to your white friends, but there is a difference. See, my parents are mixed down the line. You can see that, or else I'm a semi-albino. <laughs> Somebody messed with my family. Look at these thin lips. I hate them. I can hardly taste barbecue. <laughs> See, but black people are taught to love, but I find it hard to love midgets. That's the only thing I hate. It's a goddamn midget. All of them. I don't care what color they are. I hate them all. There's a standing order at the door there. Didn't it? Make sure to eat. No fucking midgets. <laughs> I mean that. I don't know what about me just riles me, but, you know, they look up at you like, hey, you won't sit there. Get out of my way, little short motherfucker. You know? <laughs> <laughs> See, I keep 
can kick as high as I used to, but I put my foot in the midget's ass. <laughs> don't get nothing around me. I don't want nothing. You, know, you try to be nice to me. You stand and converse with them. They stand there breathing on your fly. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't want nobody to breathe on my fly unless they're serious. <laughs> if it, sure you do. Let's pause here a moment. We'll drink a toast to human beings around the world. And what makes them laugh? The first is shit. Water. Did you ever get drunk and go home and sit on a toilet and throw up in the face bowl? <laughs> hey, you thought no one knew, didn't you? I've been drunk of that. I sat in the face bowl and threw up in the toilet. <laughs> And I came back a half hour later to put some cold water on my forehead. And I reached down in the face bowl. I, I said, God damn, I don't remember eating that. He knows, lady, you don't have to explain it to him. <laughs> That's good. You married? That's better. Yeah, I think if you're, you're in love, you don't need license, you need linen. If you're really in love, you need goggle. Shack up. Then if you don't like each other, pack up. I got married and fucked up. I married a Korean. Pretty. Maybe so. I married the enemy. Because I'm an American war veteran. I think if you can't beat them good, fuck them. <laughs> so I'm going home tonight and do my part for America. <laughs> That's right. I'm fucking the enemy. <laughs> Thank you. You laugh so nice. That's pretty. Wish you were darker. <laughs> a toast. English humor. A gentleman should never argue with a lady. He should dicker. <laughs> Chinese humor. Confucius said, crowded elevator smell different to midget. <laughs> African humor. What do you get from the elephant's trunk? Two six-foot boogers. <laughs> Mexican humor. Why does it have hair around it? To keep me from looking like a taco. <laughs> Did you ever eat one? I mean, a taco. <laughs> now you have to hold your head sideways so the meat don't fall out. <laughs> yes, it got. <laughs> Thank you, honey. That's the way it laughs. That's why I love to see girls laugh like they enjoy life because it's rough out there. How you, darling? She look like my first right. That you, Evelyn? <laughs> Another toast, miscellaneous. What is a sardine? A sardine is a little fish that smells like a finger. <laughs> you never know what goes over you. What's the difference between meat and fish? Hard to beat your fish. <laughs> hey, that's good. Hey, let me give you. Cigarette relaxation, that's why I smoke. I've been smoking 42 years. If I don't have cancer now, I'd probably have some of eat cancer's ass up. People worry about their diet so they can live. You know what I mean? They, they give up cottage cheese and applesauce and liver and bacon, ham. You know what I mean? Boiled potatoes, spinach. They quit eating all that stuff, sugar and butter and lard, just so they can live. Isn't that dumb? You don't feel like a goddamn fool laying out the hospital dying from nothing. <laughs> to laugh right out loud, don't you? Virgin? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> a 
hugged her by my wife earlier. She was, I forgot, you know, she's been bugging me 15, 15 months now for ring. When I get ring, she asked me, when I get ring, when I get ring, I said, as soon as I step out of this fucking tub, you get ring. <laughs> so I ain't taking no shit off no foreigners. See, I'm American. I was born here. My father was born here. His father was born here. His father was brought here. <laughs> was fishing too close to the river in Africa. <laughs>